Well, welcome back everyone to another video and today we're making x-rays in the cheapest way possible. I'm not going to use anything fancy like an x-ray tube or anything. We're just going to be using one of these old rectifier tubes which can be found in many old electronics. Um, things especially like guitar amps contain these. So you might notice on top of guitar amps, sometimes they'll have these tubes sticking out. But because of their design, we can actually turn this into a functioning x-ray machine. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So here's a closer look about the tube here. And this is an old rectifier tube. These were used before the advent of modern silicone diodes. So you'd apply AC current here and you get a DC current out. So this specific tube is from United Nuclear, which they quote unquote test these to have the highest x-ray output. That might just be complete bullshit. But yeah, so let's go ahead and apply a high voltage DC to this tube and we can get it to emit x-rays. Now let's go ahead and wire this whole thing up so we can get it to produce x-rays. So first I have this beautiful, sexy, high voltage power supply that I built in a previous video. I think I'm in love um, <laughs> just because the amount of work I put into this and it came out so awesome looking. Anyway, so here's our high voltage power supply and we have it hooked up to our tube here. As you can see, we got all four pins wired together with some copper. And then I have the positive going to this pin here and the negative going over here. So let's go ahead and turn on the high voltage and watch our x-rays. We got our trusty Geiger counter set up there and we can read off our radiation levels here. And this is in counts per minute. So let's go ahead and flip her on and see what we get over here. Oh, she's screaming, she's screaming. Okay, that's perfect. So we're getting a lot of x-rays out and that's what we're gonna need to take our x-rays. Um, and yeah, it's kind of just that simple. The <laughs> high voltage DC and um, this old rectifier too. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Another cool fun fact about these things is um, actually a couple TVs were recalled because um, they used to have these tubes in it obviously and TVs use a high voltage um, from a flyback transformer which is pretty much almost what I got in here and so it could produce x-rays so some TVs were actually recalled from that but yeah so let's go ahead and use this to make some x-rays well take some x-rays not make some x-rays we already made x-rays you guys already know how that works so you're probably wondering how does this thing even produce x-rays um, and the simple answer is it's very similar to an x-ray tube it's actually very similar to one of the first x-ray tubes ever invented so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how that works on the quantum level and it'll give you a really good background on x-rays so stay tuned it's might be a little bit boring but don't skip through it because like it'll give you a lot of really cool information on x-rays and yeah okay let's get into it so what makes up an x-ray tube an x-ray tube is really just a vacuum tube with a metal anode and cathode and when you apply high voltage dc across this this creates very strong electric fields enough so that the electrons can fly off from the cathode and strike the anode now because of our high accelerating voltage right the higher the voltage the more acceleration we can give the electrons and therefore the more energy we can give the electrons. And then they're gonna go ahead and slam into the anode. But the issue is when they slam in, they gotta release their energy somewhere. And in the case of this, about 1% of the energy goes into x-rays, the other 99% goes into heat, um, which can cause some issues um, like, you know, tube overheating and stuff, but we, we, can, we can just ignore that. So when the electron strikes the anode, there's two ways that mainly it produces x-rays. So the first one is called breaking radiation. And this happens when the electron comes close to the nucleus, negative charge, positive charge, yeah, they attract. So this causes the electron to curve slightly. The electron loses velocity in this maneuver. And when it loses velocity, it's gotta dump that energy somewhere because one half mass times velocity squared, right? That energy has to go somewhere, law of conservation of energy. So in this case, it can be turned into an X-ray. So as you see here, if we were to look at the spectrum of X-rays under a gamma spectrometer, this is what it would look like. So the breaking radiation is this kind of smooth curve on the bottom here. So, you know, it'll interact with multiple nucleuses on its way through. So this will produce a wide range of frequencies of X-ray. So you're probably wondering, what are those peaks in there on the gamma spectrometer? And those are called characteristic peaks. Um, I should give some background real quick that every frequency in the electromagnetic spectrum has an associated energy. So, you know, an X-ray at this frequency will always have that specific energy. And this is very useful for these characteristic peaks. So what happens is our electron comes in and knocks an electron from our inner orbitals, say the 1s orbital. 
Now, atom always wants to fill its lowest energy orbitals first. So an electron from a higher energy orbital is gonna drop down to the lower energy orbital and it's going to lose energy. So it has to dump that energy somewhere. In this case, it's gonna produce an electromagnetic radiation. And if the gap is big enough, the energy gap is big enough, right? We'll be in the frequency range of X-rays. And this can be used for a lot of elemental analysis. So, right, every atom has a unique set of orbital energy, right? So each orbital and each atom is at a different energy level. So if we excite these atoms, right, and look at the X-rays coming back, we know that this atom only produces this specific frequency of X-rays because of that energy gap. And that can allow us to determine heavy metal contents in soils and things like that. So a lot of really cool techniques with that. And I am going to, in a future video, make one of these devices so we can actually do, you know, you can point it at an alloy and find out the composition of it. Okay, okay, en enough rambling on, I'm sorry for rambling on. Let's go ahead and take some X-rays with this bad boy because that's probably what you guys came here to watch, right? So first we need something to capture our x-rays and for this I'm using the self-developmental x-ray paper. This is used for dental applications. Here's the x-ray paper, you know, you stick it in their mouth, all that fun stuff. And this contains also self-developing chemicals in here which can develop the x-ray paper without ever needing a, you know, a, a red room or anything like that to do any fancy stuff. So these are nice, simple, and easy to use. So that's why I'm gonna be using it. And now we need something to x-ray. So in this case, I'm using this beautiful, limited edition black ops 2 flash drive yes i was a i was a cringer still am well yeah so we're gonna x-ray that by just placing it right on there like that perfect now we got to put it in a straight jacket to make sure it don't go nowhere okay we got it all strapped up using this super sophisticated holding device and let's go ahead and turn her on probably gonna give it around a minute exposure because this x-ray tube even though we did get crazy readings on it um it's really not that powerful so it's gonna need probably about a minute of exposure time for this to come out so yeah let's go ahead and turn it on and let it run okay here's the moment of truth first gotta take off our x-ray part bada bing bada boom I'll take this off okay and now I'm just going to rolly rolly this up. Okay, the chemicals are in. So now I just gotta jerk this thing off for like about a minute, two minutes. Okay, moment of truth. Is it gonna come out good? Oh, oh, I see sun. Okay. Oh, if I can pull it out. Well, it works. Well, the x ray came out really shitty as you can see the rubber on the black ops 2 thing actually stopped most of the x-rays um probably because we had a lot of current flying through this tube so the voltage probably dropped considerably and um you know the x-rays aren't very penetrating um, as you can see they couldn't even penetrate the rubber but not that big of a deal i'm gonna go ahead and find something else that i can x-ray a bit better Look at the bright side though. You guys are now the first people in the world to see an X-rayed Black Ops 2 flash drive. Let's try this tiny little micro servo next. Hopefully uh, the X-rays can penetrate it. Yeah, I can give it a 50-50% chance. So now she's strapped up and ready to go. So inside the shed here, I just wanna show you guys kind of the radiation you get. It's about 20 counts per minute above background really ain't bad at all and here in the shed we have the state-of-the-art protection old microwave parts as you can see does a great job at blocking x-rays no it actually really does a great job at blocking x-rays okay moment of truth part two is it gonna come out good Okay, might have <laughs> overexposed it a bit, but uh, let me go ahead and dry it off and I think we got sign on this one. So this is what you would call a classic overexposure, but as you can see, we can see the electric motor here. We can see some of the shafts, the metal shafts. If it will focus, you can see, okay, I guess it doesn't want, there it goes. We can see some of the gears here in the servo, a screw that kind of pins and holds it down and also the wiring and some of the electrical work that goes into it. 
So there is some downsides to using this tube. As you can see on the motor, see it looks like there's almost like a double exposure, how the motor looks shifted up a bit more. That is because this x-ray tube does not produce it from a pinpoint source, but rather it produces it from a cone. And to show you what I mean by that, this is a normal x-ray tube, and the x-ays are gonna come straight out this hole right here and create a nice cone beam. So unlike the x-ray tube, this tube does not produce that nice pinpoint source. This actually produces x-rays kind of all along this cone, this top cone here, and it comes out on an angle. So it produces kind of like this cone beam that kind of extends, but the inside's hollow. Um, it's like a hollowed cone. So this does provide some challenges. So like you saw before, I placed the object over here. This was so the x-rays have the most direct angle. But as you notice from that double exposure, because x-rays from over here were actually scattering and hitting it at a different angle, showing uh, a, you know, another faint image of the motor up above there. So that's why these aren't the best tubes for taking images. They will not be very clear and they're not too powerful. So to really show you guys the cone beam, I have this intensifying screen rolled up. Now all this does is when x-rays strike it, it emits visible light in the green spectrum. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the tube into this and hook her up and I'll show you guys the pattern that the x-rays make. So let's go ahead now and do this little seven segment display. Um, I think this will come out pretty good. I actually have no idea what the insides of these look like. So perfect thing to use an x-ray for. Okay, we got her strapped up as usual. Now I'm gonna go run and take this x-ray. Moment of truth, part three. Ba, ba, be dum, ba, ba, be dum, dum. Ba, ba, be dum. Oh shit, I got the chemical on me. Shit stains. Probably not good for you either. <laughs> it's, it's just a fucking square. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Okay, well, um, yeah, there's seven segment displays don't x-ray very good well after looking through it in the sun i'm not gonna be able to show it on camera but all that i can see in there is just the seven segment display so yeah ain't really much to see i guess anyway and i can see how soft these x-rays are because the electrical tape really you can actually see on there so the, the electrical tape definitely stops those x-rays so that's gonna be all the x-rays we're taking for today but don't worry because next video I am going to be using an actual x-ray tube so we can penetrate a lot deeper. Never mind, I'm not gonna say that. We're gonna say, now we can look deeper into objects so you know we can do a lot cooler things than this little tube can handle. Um, so yeah, you know, be prepared for next video. And then the video after that is the CAT scan machine, which is just gonna be pure, it's gonna be fucking awesome. Like it's the only thing I can say about it is gonna be fucking awesome. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and see ya.